Good afternoon from a very warm, very, well it's just splendiferous at the moment. Lots of shenanigans going on in here, that Kai uh, has mentioned. This will be changed in the future at some point. Cat's all shed, now the neighbour has got it. Cat's potting area that she needed because I've built my workshop. So I'm really happy with this. Very, very happy. So let's have a look inside, through the washing obviously. So the plan is, just for the outside, is this area I want to take away this sleeper, just move that somewhere else. I want to build a natural looking pond to house the goldfish and the one I've just shown you, get rid of that because you have to go to see it, you have to go over to it. So yeah, just back to the weather, nice and sunny, a little bit of a breeze, ends the washing out, but it's still Peterborough. Bistro table because we are posh. inside so first off I've decided to build a rack to put all my mugs on so thank you to Simon who I met at the BKKS show Newark yesterday for my latest edition and obviously thanks to all those people who have donated as you can see there so first off, many, many, many of you will have seen the big stuff that I've making, uh, I've made rather. But have you seen the video? If you haven't, stay tuned. People pick up something like golf when they retire, but a man in the UK is doing something a little different. Steve Wainwright is taking everyday household items and making them ten times bigger. The items include anything from an ordinary key to a pencil sharpener, lipstick, uh, and as like we've said around here for decades, if it's big, we'll put it on TV. That's right. And Steve joins <laughs> us to tell us about his unique hobby. Good morning. Good morning, Chicago. How are you doing? Good. Good to have you with us. You know, I know miniatures is a really big thing. They have a convention, and it really changes the way you look at something when it's miniature. Why did you go the other direction? Uh, first of all, I wear glasses, so miniatures are going to be quite <laughs> different. <laughs> and it, it was just sort of a challenge that I laid down for myself, and after discussions with my wife, I thought, yeah, I picked up a tape measure, walked into my workshop, picked up a plug, and that's how it started. I just started making the plug, which is... Uh, yeah, nice. I got so many questions. Okay, let's begin with sort of how you pick some of the items that you're going to design. So um, you just see something and you say, okay, that looks good. Let me, let me try it. Uh, it. It's down to the construction methods. Have I got the available space? Have I got the available skills, the power tools, etc.? Okay. If I've got all three, let's go. Let's get on with it. Let's do it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes changing the size can really change your perspective on what the item is and what it does. And I'm wondering if people have offered you money for this as a piece of art, or is your wife telling you to get them out of the house? <laughs> well, ironically, and this is not sexist, the, the women that have actually seen this have asked, where am I going to put these? Whereas the men have gone, wow, really like that. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the most difficult was the lipstick over my shoulder, because that... As, as women are, there's so many curves involved in lipstick. It, it was That was a challenge, whereas the plug was quite easy. Yeah. Are you going to sell this stuff, or uh, what, what's the plan here? Well, I'd, I'd like to turn them into something usable. So the plug behind me is a cupboard, and I want to change the lipstick into a girl's uh, floor lamp. So I'll put the, the top oh. of the lipstick will house a light. Oh, now you're thinking. Uh, the peg turned on its side will become uh, a laundry shelf. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what is, you, has there been something that has been really difficult to put together? What's been the most challenging? It, it has to be the lipstick. I had to use uh, sewer pipe to oh, actually get okay. the, uh, the cylinder. Well, you may, re may remember the old days, Steve, that when uh, small businesses would use these giant things, like it's part of their sign or their advertising. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's just another uh, well, avenue for you. I'm, I'm in for the marketing to help. <laughs> Thank you very much. We've got a local charity called Railworld, and they've already uh, expressed a, 
a wish to have the pencil over their education oh. centre. Okay. So I'll, be, cool. I'll hopefully be making that happen, but I'd like to see them uh, displayed for a short while in our local museum. Ah, uh, you know, send us some stuff over here. I'm sure we'll we'll put it up somewhere. A giant Next TV. Reason. I'm just saying. You need the lipstick. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Steve. We'll keep right, up thanks. the good work. You're more than welcome. Take care, guys. Uh, you can check out more of Steve's work on YouTube or Facebook page. Hello, everybody. First, a quick update from the goldfish. Yeah, we think we know what's going on there, don't we? So this is just to say um, a big thank you to everybody who commented on the last video and quick update where we're at. Um, I'll move that cherry tree. Hello to everybody who asked about it yesterday at the BKKS show as well. Um, so the fish, well, the, firstly the fish, they've been a lot happier. Oh, there's the um, they've been a lot calmer. And basically, because I think we've managed to get a KH approximate, approximately three. I'd like to get it a bit higher. Um, but I think all the problems were probably down to the pH. Um, and it's why they were unhappy and they've been scraping and obviously Steve's been doing scrapes and not getting anything. So yeah, with the advice. Uh, first of all, measuring the KH, it was down at a half. So yeah, great idea. I can't, you know, whoever suggested doubling the amount of water so you get a little bit of finer um, results on your tests. Uh, most recent one was 2.5 Thursday night. So put a little load of bicarb in. We'll be checking it again soon because we've had another dump of rain since then and I think this is probably an awful lot of it's just down to the amount of rain we have. KH of rain is zero and it's just diluted what bicarb we had and um, plus all natural processes going on I think we've just and I've been fighting losing that. Um, so yeah lots of bicarb going in so KH was 2.5 last time um, we did it but pH has been holding at 7 now for a couple of weeks we did do a couple of water changes, uh, about 10% each time. And when I'm watering, I'm taking water out of the pond as well. So again, it just, it's not, not a huge amount, it's only 100 litres a time. But uh, yeah, when I do need to water, then of course that just takes a bit more out. So a little bit more uh, tap water goes in, but obviously tap water through the big blue, so without the chlorine. Chlorine was fine last time we checked. Um, and on Thursday evening, night, Ammonia is still dirty yellow, shall we say, on our test. Um, so just a touch of, of it. I think keeping the pH at 7 for a couple of weeks will probably give the bacteria the best chance to actually do their work um, on the nitrogen. Um, so the nitrite is definitely coming down. Just been coming down slowly enough, but I'm much happier than I was. Nitrate's still a bit high. Um, less of a problem that fish are happy so yeah thank you ever so much for all those people who uh who commented it would been really big help um it's all so simple isn't it but yeah thanks very much cat's new shed right while we were at uh, newark show uh, thank you to everybody that we spoke to uh, we managed to win this in the raffle so this is burton's aquatic systems drum screen cleaner so as I've never used this before, I thought I'd do a, uh, a product test. Um, so the first bit is you fill a spray bottle with one litre of warm water, hence the spray bottle in the picture. Uh, five scoops of the drum cleaner, you do actually get a scoop within the packet, which is really nice. Uh, make a litre of it up, that's a litre, but the spray bottle is 800 mil, so clearly there's a little bit left. So I'm going to take this up to the uh, drum and give it a spray and see how we go on. So here we are at the drum. It could do with a good old clean to be honest, but as we're saying Blue Peter, here's what I prepared earlier. So I've got my spray. It says you've got to spray on the surface of the drum. In fact, there's so much um, brown stuff, I might just spray it everywhere to be honest. I shall see. 
so if you can probably see just that area there I've somehow got two stripes it's probably rubbing on something but we'll, we shall see so after you spray this on it has to be left for a minute so we'll give that a minute and I'll come back to you so here we are after a bit of cleaning um, I actually used a soft paintbrush, brand new paintbrush, although it does look a bit rusty, uh, in order to help the um, fluid penetrate the screen. So I didn't have to rub too hard and the uh, crud came off quite nicely to be honest. So yeah, um, it did work. Would I recommend it? Yeah, if you want to spend some money on it please do, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it but we actually live in an age where we've all come up with ideas for cleaning various parts of our uh, filtration system and ponds so if you've already got an idea and it works just stick with that if not give this a go, why not? So all done all up and finished Try not to block out any of the light, but we shall see. I'm just for a bit of a test drive with my lamp. Excuse the shaking camera, I'm turning it on. How about that? That is designed for a young girl's bedroom as a floor lamp with a foot switch. Look at that. Anyway, happy with that. sun's right in my eyes right just going back to uh, BKKS Sunday edition I didn't go on the Saturday um, thank you to all those people that made themselves known said hello to us Fenland Lass Leadfield Telford Coy Pond Phil and his wife Claire camera woman Claire um, keeping it coy Jamie up North Coy, it was absolutely loads. Andy Darby Coy, hmm. Graham was a little bit, from a medical point of view, I was quite concerned for Graham because I did suggest getting his hand in his pocket and getting his wallet out because Andy had seen some really cool bargains and then uh, Graham's left eye started twitching. Not certain what that was, but. I hope it feels better now Graham. Anyway, moving on. Just going back to the pond. Uh, as you may or may not know, Cat's just had a chat about the water quality. I think we're putting down all the shenanigans and the bad stuff down to water quality. As a result, two of our fish, in fact one of my favourites, the Goromo, and one of the others who will probably now remain hidden uh, started to get uh, some sores or a saw so right in the background there there's the Goromo so I had to and it's just had a scratch would you believe it anyway um, I took that out and it had um, just basically a hole in its side so I had to give it a, a scrape there was no real parasites on it at all but I think the damage had already been done by then so I uh, took it out, knocked it out, cleaned it up and I keep checking the wound as best I can as it's passing. Difficult to see at the moment because we've got an awful lot of uh, extra air on because of the hot temperatures. But it seems to be doing a lot better. So it's right below me now. And chances are we're not going to see it so I'm not going to waste your time. And then we've got Hiromi from Japan. Oh. If you ever get a chance to go to Japan, it will change your entire outlook on koi keeping. I guarantee it. That's the other polar fish there, just gone past. So that's it. Um, it was nice. Is that the right word? Where we learned that so many other people were suffering no nice is not the right word but 
you felt as though you were alone when you were tackling water parameter problems and putting all sorts of chemicals in the pond. Parasites seem to be ongoing since Christmas. Just horrendous, but the fact that other people were sharing their stories of their doom and gloom and how they got out of it is, um, uh, yeah, quite buoyant. It got me back up there. Because at the time it's like, what? Well, I can't throw any more chemicals in, I've just run out of everything. But I think we've touched wood. I'm going to touch some wood now. Touch wood, I think we've got over it now. And we can start to see uh, things perking up. So anyway, I've, uh, I've wasted time enough. I've blurbed on enough. Thank you for watching. Thanks for saying hello at BKKS. Um, oh, Anthony Day as well. Hi, Anthony. Uh, I shall catch you later and speak to you on the next one. Stay safe. Are we still jabbing? We might be doing. Take care. Bye-bye. And, oh, goodbye.